Hi, I'm Sam Benyako. This presentation deals with conducted emission of switch mode systems. Let's see first of all what conducted emission means. Here shown is a power supply which is based on a flyback type converter it's fed from the AC line, has a bridge rectifier, and then there is a capacitive filter. There is a switcher in here. We have a coupled inductor here, a diode filtering capacitor, and this actually represents the load. Now, if we look at this line here leading to the switcher, we're going to see pulses, current pulses of this shape, very typical of a PWM system. Some of these ripple current or these pulses are actually shorted out by the capacitor. However, some of this ripple actually propagates and uh, goes out and actually is fed to the power line. So if we are going to look at a line here, we're going to see typically the low frequency component that is the charging of the capacitor as a matter of fact, which will be very typical for a capacitive type filter. However, superimposed on it, we're going to see this remnant of the high frequency component, uh, which still are available and penetrate into the line. Now, if I look at the power spectrum of this signal, excluding the very low frequency uh, of the line, which we are not interested in, we're going to see something of this sort. So this will be the power spectrum of the uh, high frequency component. This is a power density of a current, which is normally expressed in terms of amp square over hertz, sometimes as amp over square root of hertz. Now this is actually the conducted emission of this particular uh, power supply. Now, if we have such an emission, we like to measure it, and the setup includes a unit which is called LISTEN, which is Line Impedance Stabilization Network, LISTEN. This LISTEN actually sits between the AC line and the device that we are testing, sort of feeding the line through it. It has three or actually two outputs. One is ground, which we feed to a spectrum analyzer. This is a typical setup for measuring the conducted emission. As we have said, there are some components of high frequency which are fed uh, to the line in this case, because the listen is sort of sitting between the line and the device, it actually feeds uh, to the listen. And here's the high frequency component coming here and sort of back and forth through these two pairs of AC lines. Now, this component is called differential mode conducted emission. Differential because it is between these two lines. Uh, so it's a signal that goes in and then actually returns. So it sort of loops here in between the lines. So this is called a differential mode uh, emission. Many countries or many continents, I should say, have regulations regarding the amount of emission that is permitted from a switching device. And the regulation is usually specified, like in this chart here. These two curves refer to different type of measurements. One is average and one is a quasi-peak. This is related to the spectrum analyzer method of measurement. Let's not worry about it too much now. Let's just concentrate about one of these. Let's say the average one. And what this uh, curve actually says that in order to pass the regulation, you have to make sure that you are not exceeding the limits, and these are here, this, this is the limit, that is that your spectrum or power density emitted of the conducted emission is below this limit. 
This particular standard, again, there are different standards in different countries. I'm not going into it now. This particular one starts at 150 kilohertz and ends at 30 megahertz. So this is the frequency band of concern. Anything that is outside here, that's okay. Nobody worries about it, at least as far as the regulation goes. Now, what is this listen? We have a device on the test. This is the switcher. This is the power supply. The listening is actually a filter. The purpose of this filter is to sort of lock this emitted signal within the listen and prevent the current or the ripple current from going to the line. This is done by placing here a relatively high uh, inductances or inductors, uh, relatively high taking into account the frequency uh, that we are talking about. And then there are two coupling capacitors, 0.1 microfarad, and two resistors, one kilo ohm. And the output actually is taking off this resistor as go and goes to the analyzer. Most analyzer, analyzers will have a 50 ohm input impedance or resistance, which is uh, typical for high frequency uh, measuring equipment. If it is not, then there is a need to actually uh, connect here 50 ohm because the standard of the regulation is specified in terms of a 50 ohm load. So it could be either internal or normally it will be part of the spectrum analyzer. On the other side, we have the AC line which is connected to the listen and then actually feeding the device under test. So let's first of all get a feeling of the meaning of this uh, chart of these uh, limits of the uh, conducted emission regulation. As I've said, it starts at 150 kilohertz, ends at 30 megahertz, and it has this limit here. Now, it is specified here in dB, this is dB, and dB microvolts, okay? This means that the values are referred to a one microvolt unit. So, if you have the number in dB, uh, you can get the actual voltage by taking the dB value, dividing it by 20, this is the 20 here, and then taking 10 to the power of this number. Let's assume, or let's approximate this value here, let's assume that this is the limit, just for a very, very coarse approximate calculation, let's say it's a 45 dB, 45 dB microvolt, 45 dB microvolt refer to one microvolt, is 177 microvolt. Now remember that this voltage is actually measured on a 50 ohm. So the actual current going through this 50 ohm is the voltage divided by 50, and it comes to be approximately 3.3 microamp. What is this microamp? This is microamp per square root of hertz. That is, if you look at the very narrow window here, of uh, uh, hertz, uh, square root of hertz, and the value here is 3.3 microamp. The actually RMS current is the integral of all this area. In order to get the RMS value of the total current, I have to take the integral, but this time of the power related unit, this is amp square over hertz over frequency from F1 to F2. Now F1 is 150 kilohertz, F2 is 30 megahertz, so I'm going to say that it's about 30 megahertz. We assume that the level is kind of constant, so it'll be 3.3, it's microvolt square, so it's 10 to the minus 6 squared, so 10 to the minus 12, and now we have units of amp square over hertz. And now I have to multiply it by the bandwidth, and I'll say it's at 30 megahertz, and it comes out to be approximately, very approximately, 12, 20 milliamp RMS. So 20 milliamp RMS is the, the permissible 
ripple current to be conducted from a system into the line. Now, if we assume, say, one kilowatt unit at 20 volt, 220 volts RMS line, the current of this unit will be approximately 5 amp. We are relied 20 milliamp. So it comes to be something like 0.4%. That is, you are allowed to have like 0.4% of sort of noise, high frequency noise injected into the line. If, however, your system is only 100 watts, then uh, it's actually 4%. So it's not small. It's, um, it depends, of course, on the power of the system where the regulation is independent uh, of power. We use this listen to measure the differential mode emission. So differential mode means that we have a ripple current coming in and coming out. Now, what this listen is actually doing, it sort of blocks the current from going this way and going this way and locks it into this path. So actually, the current is passing through this resistor, which again is in parallel with 50 ohm, so it passes through the 50 ohm. So we have a voltage here generated due to this current and a voltage here also generated due to this current. So if we take the difference between the two, uh, this will be the difference divided by two, we'll get the, assuming they're equal, we'll get the voltage about on each one of these current. And this will be the differential mode emission measured by the uh, spectrum analyzer by or through the listen. Let's move now to the other type of emission, which is called common mode emission. And let me first say, what's, what is the origin of this noise? If we have this same power supply that I've shown before, we have to take into account that there are some parasitic capacitances between, say, the two parts of this coupled inductor, between here and here, actually there are some inside capacitance, interwinding capacitances, and then there is a capacitance between this point and ground. Consequently, there is some ripple current, high frequency component, that sort of penetrates through this capacitor and is sort of uh, moving toward ground and eventually ends up at the ground wire of the uh, AC line. Let's have a closer look at some of the instances that we are going to have uh, these uh, parasitic paths for the current. Here is a transistor. Uh, it's a, say, a MOSFET transistor. This is the metal part. Uh, this is the hole for, for the screw to hold it to the heat sink here. Uh, heat sink is normally uh, grounded. Now between this part, the metal part, which is normally connected to the drain, uh, and the heat sink, there is very little space. Actually, there is some insulation, but, but due to thermal uh, consideration, you like to put it as close as possible. So this brings about some uh, capacitance between this and the heat sink. And so therefore, since the voltage of the drain is sort of jumping up and down, uh, in a case of a PWM, like a square wave, uh, these transitions are penetrate, these voltages are actually causing a current to flow uh, into uh, the heat sink and then back to ground and then into the uh, ground side of the uh, power line. So what we have here that from the device that we have, we have this part here and then it returns through both of these lines uh, of the AC uh, part. So this is why this type of uh, emission is called common mode because it sort of goes in and penetrate through these two lines. Now this common mode is then coming here through the ground and when a listen is connected uh, to the device, this is the device, then the return will be through these two resistors. These are 50 ohm resistors. So if we measure the voltage on these resistors and these times if we'll sort of 
uh, sum them up and divide by two, we'll get the contribution of the common mode on one, each of these resistors. And this will be the way to measure the common mode emission of a uh, switching system. So what can we do in order to reduce the emission in order to pass the regulation? Well, what we have to do is to introduce a filter. The concept of the filter is the following. For the differential mode, I'm going to put here inductance, inductance, the two inductors, a capacitor. So this differential current will find its way through the capacitor rather than the high impedance of the inductors. Now for the common mode, we have to do something similar. We'll have to put a large inductor here in the line, in the common line, uh, so as to make the impedance here is high and block this current from passing through. Now this is not very practical. I mean, you wouldn't put an inductor in the uh, ground line. So the actual real solution is shown here. We have the differential mode filters or the filters to suppress the differential mode essential capacitor here high impedance then we have another capacitor to again short whatever remains and now we have a common mode inductor and it's a coupled inductor that two inductors which are wound on the same core and it's very important to have the dots here this would mean that for the ac current the primary power going into the system which goes this way and comes this way uh, the two currents actually neutralize one in another so the ac uh, the low frequency ac does not see the inductance of this coupled inductor however for a signal which is common to the two that is if we sort of connect the two and look in here, we see the large inductance. So this common mode inductor will sort of suppress the common mode uh, emission. Then we'll have usually a, another capacitor. And in order to allow the current to move the common mode current, which is injected and is blocked by this uh, common mode inductor, we uh, provide an alternative path, and this will be by these capacitors. So we have capacitors that allow the current to sort of, sort of provide a path for the current to flow. Let me uh, put it in here in a more clear way. Uh, we have, these are the lines, here are the capacitors, and we have a common current coming here. So we have this uh, common mode current, and rather than passing through the high impedance, uh, the low impedance path is through this capacitor, which brings them back into the system. So it locks the common mode uh, component inside the unit. So this will attenuate the magnitude of the ripple to reach the value uh, below the limits of the uh, standard of the regulation. If the original unit may have uh, the spectrum of the power density passing uh, over uh, the limits, then uh, one has to actually design a filter that will bring the power spectrum below the limits of the standard and in order to pass uh, the regulation and get the approval uh, of the authorities. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found the presentation interesting and you'll find it useful in the future. Thank you.